It's just so good. I had to use it again. Right. And that's <laughs> just that's officially the theme now for this this season two Ooh. of Validate Me is is definitely going to get the intro to the Twin Peaks theme. Yes. Because I love it so much. It's uh, Angelo Badalamente. The whole thing is awesome. Presley and I were talking about it a little bit this week and how uh, it actually has. I'm sorry, we didn't save it for the podcast. Well, no, a lot of the songs are like, the same melody, mm-hmm. but it's different instruments, mm-hmm. and so people in the show have different instruments, which is kind of cool, because mm-hmm. if you hear the xylophone, it's Audrey. Oh, okay. You know that it's yeah. kind of Audrey's thing, right? But yeah, let's but let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Where are welcome, we? Welcome to Validate Me. Welcome everybody back to Validate Me. Who are we? Are we? Which, What's uh, happening? It's season two of Validate Me, Why? because in essence, what this started out was, was, was Presley and me would take turns assigning each other media that we loved, mostly stuff I loved when I was about her age. And stuff that her and her friends love now, we would take turns watching it and talking about it and trying to prove how cool we were to each other. Uh, then we decided for season two that we were going to launch in and do kind of a whole season of a TV show, Twin Peaks, which was my favorite TV show mm-hmm. by far. Uh, her brother, Cooper, is named after Agent Cooper, at least nice. in large part. So I loved this show. Absolutely loved it. So we're in the midst of that. We just started that a little bit. And also we have Mommy now who is uh, sitting in on the Special show. Special guest yeah. or no, a permanent like a guest? Host, a host, a host, co-host, yeah, host, co-host. Gosh. So the, uh, uh, Mommy watched Twin Peaks. So we kind of got a little bit of the uh, feels like the first time thing going on here, right? So Preston's yeah. watching it for the first time. I watched it yeah, yeah, countless Hundreds times. times. Yeah, like I can't so even begin times. to say how many times I watched it. Because even, even now, it? like I haven't seen it in, in years and years and years. But even when we watch it, I know every like minutia of what's about to happen. And Could like you breaths it? and beats and stuff, probably so. Nice. And so, uh, and then Mommy watched it when it was out yes. on TV, like an original run, and only saw it that one time. Yes. Um, and doesn't remember a lot. Yeah, I don't even on. remember who yeah. killed Laura Palmer. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, it's kind of a cool mix of, of what we got going on here, right? So today we are doing episodes three and four. Um, yeah, so let's start uh, episode three a little bit. I want to read a little I bit. I thought of it was it. episode two. Well, like technically, it, it, it sort of depends, right? Technically, the pilot didn't have a number, right? And so episode one was the first episode after the pilot. Yes. So last week we did the pilot and one. Yes. And now we're doing two and three. Right. That's perfectly so valid in some numbering systems. Uh-huh. But a lot of times, like if you get it off iTunes or you get it somewhere else, the pilot is one. Okay. And then two, we did one and two, the pilot and episode two. And Netflix then now we're it? doing three and four. Uh, how does Netflix? Yeah. I don't really know. Okay. To be honest with you. Remember. I don't know. Whatever. Well, we'll, we'll, they didn't have names, I think, when they first came out. And, but these these actually they have names on them now and this is something about like Zen and the art of of yeah the next one is rest in pain I wrote rest that one down but I didn't write one, yeah. this one down. it was something about Zen and the art of whatever right catching um so whatever we're doing those uh, so they didn't have names originally and they just they came up not. with that I think they had episode and then remember I don't know if you remember this well you you don't remember this because you only watched it when it first came out I think it was the DVD collector's edition. <laughs> When that came out, they did Log Lady intros for each episode. So the what? Log Lady would come out and give a little speech what? about like what the episode was going to be about. Maybe we'll watch those as a oh recap. Do you have what? the DVD? I, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got the whole box set DVD. So, so, so explain it again. At the beginning like of the, the episode. At the beginning of every episode, the Log Lady would come out and, and be where? like, hey, like here's. And they shot it years and years later? I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I assume so. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. And then so she would do a little The Log Lady intros yeah. for each okay. of the episodes. And I think for the first season. Where is she? What's happening? She's like in her house or in the lodge or something. Not in the lodge, but in the. Uh, and she the has her log. Yeah, of course she has her log. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know there's like a whole thing about how, uh, oh, like David Lynch, it seems. David Lynch had a dream um, about the log lady, okay. like the actress that plays the log lady, and a dream about her like holding a log. And he told her, I think this is like a racer. I think she was in a racer head. Um, and he said, like, someday you'll be in a movie of mine, or you'll, I'm going to do a show and you're going to play a lady with a log. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that was the next day, right? And then, like, that And because he's David Lynch, she's like, oh, okay. That character kind of spun out of that, right? Like, mm-hmm. you'll read a lot. Like, we'll talk a little bit about some of the symbolism and stuff. We're starting to get into some things we can really dig into some meat of Twin Peaks. Um, but, like, you'll learn a lot of what David Lynch does is, you know, he just likes this image. Or he likes this idea of this thing. Or he sees this thing and thinks it would be really cool on the show. And so he puts stuff there. Like, he, uh, it really popular like famous quote of his was that he always wanted to be a painter 
and he made movies because he wanted to make moving paintings. Um, and so like each frame is supposed to be like a work of art almost. Mm -hmm. And, but it's, it's about the visuals as much as it is anything else. And so not everything, like people try and layer all this meaning on top of his work, but sometimes it's just, Hey, I think that looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Right. I think like there was a story about, I think like the flickering lights that Mm -hmm. like one of the, uh, one of the grips was monkeying with the lights to get the lights to work correctly, and he just saw that on set and was like, "Oh my god, that looks really cool!" Can you For just the stand over there? Stuff? No, no, no. This was like uh, in the I can't remember if it was in the the autopsy room, right? Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Were uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, he's like, "Can you just stand over there and flick the lights mm-hmm. while we shoot this scene?" Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't mean anything, right? It just kind of looked cool, and he thought it was interesting. But people layer all this. Like that's one of the things that actually works in, in David Lynch's favor. Because you bring your own baggage and interpret all of these things. And maybe he just thought this kind of looked neat. Um, yeah. But you end up putting all this stuff on top of it. I, don't know, mm-hmm. I think it's a really cool thing about his work is that you get to, you get to bring a stuff Accidental to it. symbolism is like a very real thing. Yeah. That yeah. like pe- writers will subconsciously put something right. in there. I read a thing the other day about a, I can't remember who it was, but it was an author who they do his books like in uh, uh, English classes in high school. Oh. And he said that like his friend's kids did the thing and he read the syllabus about it and he's like yeah i didn't do any of that <laughs> like, yeah. i don't know what they're talking about with like the symbolism and right. this meeting I like wonder why that i did that right. and i didn't do any of that and right. you know what nobody's ever asked me like yeah. if, if some school system had come and asked me why i chose to do a thing i would tell them why i did it but nobody ever asked me and now i find out they're teaching That's it in school so and it has wild. nothing to do with That's what I meant because for film school is all about yeah. taking each right. thing and right. talking about what that right. is symbolic of and whatever and yeah, maybe it's, it's just maybe it ends up yeah, like nothing. I, I think you would see that like Lynch would be a good example mm-hmm. of that you would really tear apart his stuff because it seems so symbolic because it's so visual and so like non- nonsensical mm-hmm. in some yeah. ways and you're like oh there has to be a reason mm-hmm. that this shot is there mm-hmm. and it, no not, not always like sometimes he just he was walking by he was on his walk in the morning and he thought something looked really pretty so he put it in the in the shot mm-hmm. really weird yeah, yeah all right that's cool. All right, so this is, uh, uh, oh, yeah, let me see what episode. This is three, maybe two. Yeah, okay, so this is episode two. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Zen or the skill to catch a killer. Okay, the, the, I was kind of right. Yeah, yeah. So this is the third episode. Episode two is the third episode okay. of, <laughs> of the first season of the American mystery television show Twin Peaks. Episode was written by series creators David Lynch and Mark Frost and directed by Lynch. Uh, it's got the regulars in it. Uh, inter- introduces Michael J. Anderson as the man from another place, mm-hmm. Miguel Ferrer as Agent Rosenfeld, and David Patrick Kelly as Jerry Horn. Um, it says that uh, episode two was the first broadcast on April 19th, 1990 on ABC and was watched by an audience of 19.2 million households. That's a lot of people. Uh, equating to roughly 21% of the available audience. It's been well received since its initial broadcast and is regarded by critics as a groundbreaking television episode. It's since influenced and been parodied, parodied by several uh, television series. Academic readings of the episode have highlighted <laughs> its depiction of heuristics, uh, a priori knowledge, and the sexual undertones of several characters' actions. Wow, it's kind oh, of deep for a Wikipedia okay. article. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. we're on the Wikipedia, so we're not on Lostpedia anymore. No, 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 we're not on Lostpedia. Yeah, we're just going to do it, checking it. We'll, we'll have to look and see where that ranks in the list of Lost episodes. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, so the, uh, the, opening, the, the opening shot of this is uh, the horns dinner. having, like, dinner, I guess. I, I thought it was breakfast when I first started watching mm-hmm. it, but I think it may be dinner. Maybe um, lunch. Who knows? And it's again, very uncomfortable. Like, it's sound so design. Mm-hmm. The, the the utensils on the plates was just excellent, especially in headphones. Like, really, really amazing kind of sound design yeah. coming in. I thought I was super impressed. And we get uh, Jerry mm-hmm. makes his first appearance. <laughs> but, like, three baguettes, which he presumably yeah, got from, like, France? Ben's yeah, he brother got him from that he, Paris. That he flew back in from, With from Paris. With three baguettes. Well, yeah. Just... I had four of these damn things every day I was there. That reminded me of Mommy in Paris. Yes, yes, because that's what Cooper and I ate. <laughs> Mommy and Cooper, they just ate those baguettes like every right, day. Right, with it's butter like, slathered. They yeah. slather the butter on there. Butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a, we had ham. It can't ham, be that good. 
Oh. He just pulled it off oh, the plane. Had, oh, oh, yeah, right. No, I was thinking the same thing. Like, he's been in a suitcase on a plane all the way to Paris. <laughs> yeah. They probably didn't keep her well. You might want to warm that thing up a little bit. <laughs> I, right? know, uh, I did also think that uh, I was very, very disturbed by Ben Horn eating a baguette like a the ear of corn. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's just not the proper way to dig into a baguette. And he kept eating it that way, and every time I see it... it like, it, like, from the top? No, he was eating it from the side. Oh. Like uh, a corn uh -huh. cob. Like, like, going... It was it was not a good... Yeah. yeah. Clearly. Uncomfortable. Uh, very this uncomfortable. one of many uncomfortable dinners in... This. In the horns? Yeah, that's yeah. Exactly, yeah I, I bet and they have a lot show. of uncomfortable And dinners, so why yeah. do they have to There's eat all... together for dinner every night? I don't know. I mean, they kind of always do, right? And then, it, it, you know, like some families do that. Like, I know they do, and they it's very uncomfortable. Yeah, 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 right. You, uh, uh, I, I think that, yeah, it's it's a super uncomfortable thing. And even at the end when, when he and, and Jerry leave, mm -hmm. you know, he's like always a pleasure or he whatever. Puts... Like it's obviously no one wants to be it's... participating in that. So presumably, right, okay. this is... A room that leads into, like, a, another room. Most to rooms leave. lead into <laughs> other rooms. <laughs> They're not just like totally sealed <laughs> off rooms that no one can get in or out of. No, no almost it every room go leads outside, to another. Room. Right? Yeah. Like it goes, in, it goes into another <laughs> room. But like, but what's Wait, have you been in rooms <laughs> before? Have you ever been in a house? Not all of the rooms, the doors go outside. No, but he what's puts your? Sunglasses on. Oh, well, oh, he's just cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but he's that's being not cool. cool. Yeah. They're probably prescription sunglasses. He thinks like, he that's looks fair. cool wearing his prescription but, like, sunglasses. But that's not. The, there's a very specific thing you can do if you're wearing sunglasses inside. Like if you come in and don't take them off. Mm -hmm. But it's just really weird if you put them oh, on yeah, yeah. inside while you're leaving a room, as <laughs> if you're exiting the house into a sunny environment. That's character development. Yeah, that's it's telling weird. you something about that character that he puts his sunglasses. I know it's telling me yeah. something about that character, but it it came across as really weird. Right. Have we ever had a dining room since you've been alive? Not yeah. with not with stuff in it. Wait, I mean, we had a table. Like our house had a dining room. But we didn't mm -hmm. use it as a dining yeah. room. Yeah, I, I think they're just wasted yeah, space. Yeah, Brian hates my dining rooms. <laughs> 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 my favorite parts of the house. Is house. I really hate it. <laughs> they're my favorite parts to make in sim houses because I don't have to think too much about extra space because you just put a table. And it's even worse, like the the house in Denver. Like we had a little breakfast area yeah. that's supposed to have a table that you sit down and eat. Mm -hmm. But then there's also a dining room that has another table that you sit down and eat at sometimes. I, yeah, I hate like, it. I hate that's it. really weird. It, it's terrible. So when we would look at houses and they had the big dining room in the front, mm -hmm. like you walk in and there's a dining room, Brian would... It was awful. That, yeah, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can put something else in If you can't turn room. it into an office. Well, sometimes well, you can. Yeah, like sometimes it it's really open. Weird. And, yeah. And, yeah, like if they're closed off and you can make it an office or something, that, that, that was totally fantastic, right? Yeah. But sometimes they're open in a way that you you couldn't pull that off. Double living room. I didn't like it. 